better. You know, like, oh, today was really easy. Well, you know, it isn't really easy. Just that you guys have been doing this thing of adding, subtracting, common denominators, all that stuff before. All right. Any questions on last night's homework? All right. Let's take a look at number. Two, but I need you guys to be in your seats and be quiet. That's not my definition, Aiden, of quiet. All right. Let's take a look at number 24, you said, Josie? 24. 24. 24 says the following. It says 5B plus 2. So 5B plus 2 is in the numerator of the first fraction. Uh, over 8 uh, plus 3B minus 4 over 10. All right. This is actually one of the easier ones, not to insult you, Josie, but uh, check it out. The denominator just has two numbers. We have to worry about all that stuff, about all the variables to the highest power. It's just, it's just numbers. Treat it just like you would a normal fraction. 8 and 10, what's the common denominator? 40. 40. Okay, scratch work. 5B plus 2, I need to turn it into something over 40. Well, it's already an 8, so that means I need to multiply top and bottom by 5. Five. I'm going to do it really quickly in my head. 5 times 5B is 25B. 5 times 2 is 10. There's the first fraction. Second fraction, how do you turn that into a 40? Five times, by four. times by 4. So that one is going to turn into? Uh, 12B minus 16 over 40. Are we adding or subtracting? Adding. So when we're adding, that's the easier of the two. Remember, we're subtracting, we'd have to flip every sign here. Not make everything negative, flip the signs. But when we're adding, we don't want anything but add. So combining like term, I got a 12, 25B and a 12B. That'll give me 27B. A 10 and a minus 16 gives me a minus 6 all over 40. Okay. Does anything go into 27 and 6? No. Well, 6 it's, goes into 40. Isn't it 37? Sorry. Thank you. Plus one for you. That's fine. 37, nothing. It, something goes into 27 to 6. That would be 3. But this time it's 37. Nothing goes into 37 to 6. So that's the answer. Okay. If it had been 27, we could divide out of 3. All right. So that is the answer to number 24. Questions? All right. On Fridays, I collect homework. We don't go over it. Other than what are your questions? Well, I, I will say, remember that's how you know if you're doing it right or wrong. Maybe, but you check yourself? I check every time you turn home, I don't check literally every question. I usually memorize four to make sure that everyone is being honest. And I just go straight down. So I'll memorize, I don't know, five, 10, 15, 20. See if they mark it wrong when they get it wrong. Or when I have some people who literally just put random numbers on their homework. And they're like, oh, I'm just going to turn in homework and I'm going to have random numbers. Aiden, you've never done that? Well, he's clearly saying your name. That you've done it. Well, All right, Julie, Julie, we all good? We're good, okay. All right, there's your homework for tonight. Write it down, please. Hey, no joke, does anyone know if they have an appointment next, or two weeks from now? That would be a better choice, yeah. It's at, like, no, he needs to get find out. See if you can. I mean, you know that you're not going to have uh, one for P. Are you taking PE this year? Yeah. You know you're not going to have one for P. I would see if you can get one. I have it on the 12th. I don't know. 18th. That's after the 18th. I don't know. I've done the math on it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Boy, that sounds like fun. Yeah. That's what they used to do in the Middle Ages to torture people. Oh, my wife had that when she got braces. Uh, this is this is a bad story, but I'll tell it anyway. Uh, my wife, she got braces in her, we were married, she was so late 20s, she got braces. And um, this is a bad story, and it's a joke, and we shouldn't laugh about it, but it's 
funny. Funny, yeah. But anyway, um, she got braces. So when they when they do that, she had to get like a, go into surgery, right? To get this done. So some people their mouths are too small, so they have to literally they crack the bone, and then they put a device in that every night you turn it like a half a turn. It's a screw that pushes your bones out this way, so it opens up space. So you wind up with a big gap, like you, she lit my, my finger, but she literally put her finger between that gap when all was done. And then they moved all the teeth around. Anyway, long story short, so she goes in to get the surgery. Well, the surgery for her, they gave her these two blood, big black eyes. I mean, big yeah. black eyes. Right. I think so. So anyway, she's in surgery. She spent one day in the hospital. The next day I go to pick her up. and. You know, the doctor says, okay, everything looks good. Uh, here's some pain medication or prescription for some pain medication. Xanax. You can go home. So I'm walking in a hospital with my wife with two black eyes. Oh, my gosh. Oh. So I'm standing there in the line at the pharmacy to pick up the prescription. And I know every single person in that line was looking at me like, I was afraid that I was going to get beat up when I was walking out there. I know they were all thinking the same thing. You <laughs> All right. So were you wearing a white tank top? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Back up here. So, uh, mixed expressions. So I said that today ends up being slightly Tristan and Rowan. Mr. Thirty-eight, can you go back to the? Yeah. Four and twenty. Like, no. Your story was distracting me. Yeah, it's your fault. Oh, I'm not Jamal. I'm Jamal. He's Ron. Hey, let's uh, let's keep the language friendly, please. He said Jamal. Yeah. Neither one of your names. Yes. Right. Back up here. Back up here. Mr. C, can you go back again? Okay. It's two seventy one to two seventy two to four twenty. We're gonna run out of time. Okay, we're good now. All right, now everyone, uh, let's uh, get back into a more academic place. Right, let's see here. Rowan. Okay, here we go. So mixed expressions. Mixed expressions just simply means that we're going to be uh, multiplying or adding or dividing something that re uh, requires you to do something to something that is a fraction to something that's not a fraction. Not mixed numbers, so to speak, but it's mixed things. All right, so here's how it works. More fractions ends up being an easier day. All right, there are two rules to remember. I'm going to ignore you for a second. There are two rules to remember. Uh, we don't like mixed numbers, and we are going to change all mixed numbers to improper fractions. To insult your intelligence, just remember, to change a mixed number to an improper fraction, we start with a denominator. We multiply it by the whole number. We make this big circle. We add the numerator, and we rewrite the denominator. In other words, we take the 4. We multiply it by 2. That's 8. Plus 3 is 11. That's where the 11 comes from, all over the 4, the original denominator. This oh. is not a class on changing mixed numbers to improper fractions. You're in algebra 1. You're supposed to know this, but I did remind you that. Okay? We also don't like integers or variables all by themselves. So we will turn everything today into a fraction. We turn 2 into a fraction by? 2 over 1. Okay. We turn, C we turn into x into a fraction by? x over 1. All right. So mixed numbers we're going to write as improper fractions. Whole numbers and variables we're going to write as fractions. Why? Because today we'll be doing adding and subtracting. It's called uh, addition and subtraction of mixed numbers, right, in the sense that we're going to be adding 2 to a fraction or we'll be adding x to a fraction or subtracting. Okay. So box number one, you should be able to turn this into an improper fraction, turn this into an improper fraction, turn so, these into fractions. Wait, so two, two, would be negative? Where's the 11? Yes. Okay, so two would be negative. Well, when you when the uh, mixed number is negative, you just ignore the negative until the very end. Oh, okay. Okay, so you do five plus four. Uh, add one, not multiple. Oh, okay. Julie? Yeah. Not okay. Sure. <laughs> four over twenty. Really? Not four over twenty. Five. Multiply the denominator times the whole number. Add the numerator all over the denominator. Twenty-one over five. So twenty-one. Right. Correct. Yes, twenty-one over four. Twenty-one over five. 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 First one, twenty-one over five. Second one, C over one. 
Bottom left is negative two something. Negative two x over one. Uh, upper right is. Uh, if I see a mistake and I understand the reason why, you see this negative 11 and you want to say 3 times negative 11, negative 33. We ignore the negative in this process. We attach it at the end. 3 times 11 is 33 plus 2 is 35 over 3 and make it a negative. So it's not that we're doing 3 times negative 11 and then adding 2. We're That's doing all we're doing? No, no. Aww. This is just the start. So. In order to do today's operation, everything must be a fraction. Now you know how to turn things into a fraction. Okay. Technically, that's half the class right there, right? You're like, wow, that was pretty quick. That's half of the class. That's it. I told you today was an easy day. Second thing is now we're actually going to do the adding and subtract. But it turns out that what we're going to be adding and subtracting isn't as complicated as last class. I said last class was the hardest. All right, so here's how this works. We've got a C plus 5 over C. So we're going to use the skill that we just learned. We don't like uh, variables all by themselves. We've got to make that into a fraction. So what's that fraction? Okay. So step number one, you're going to write everything as a fraction. Further, just remember, if it's a mixed number, you're going to write it as an improper fraction. We've got no mixed numbers here. Now, this is going to visually get a little bit messy, but trust me, if you pay attention, you'll be fine with this. So all I did was put C over 1 in the step. Hey, now I can add these two together. But remember, in order to add, what must you have? In order to add two fractions, I gotta, do we have common denominators? No. We don't. So step number two is you got to get common denominators. So we're going to use the skill from the last two days to do that. Last two days, we got common denominators. OK, 1 and C, what's the common denominator? C. OK. One. So when we do we have any addition or subtraction in the denominator? No. So I want everything. What do I got up there? One and a two. Well, therefore I only have a one C, one C which is just plain old. C. So the common denominator is C. Okay. So the common denominator is C. This is great. Well, this one is already C. So all I'm gonna do is change this one to a C. But in order to do that, I multiply top and bottom by C. So top and bottom by C, which would give me C squared over C. C. C squared over C for the first fraction, the other one's 5 plus C. I'm sorry, 5 over C. Do you see what I did there? Pun intended. Get it? See what I did there? Right. Okay, here we go. What's C squared plus 5? 5 C squared. What? What's C squared plus 5? I don't know. C squared plus 5. C squared plus 5. Oh. Now, what you guys were thinking of, what is C squared times 5? That's 5 C squared. But when we're adding them, well, they're not like terms. You can't add them together. So C squared plus 5 is just C squared plus 5. That's so smart. Now, occasionally, these can be factored. Right? Okay. It turns out that C squared plus 5 kind of looks sort of like one of those special case ones. The special case one is when it's C squared minus 5. So this one ends up being not a special case. There's nothing to factor. In fact, most of the homework, there's nothing to factor today at all. Okay. Okay, let's see another one. Hey, I don't show this to kids in pre-algebra. They can't do this. There's too much going on here. But for you guys, you could do this. Five minus that ugly looking fraction right there. Step number one, write everything as a fraction. Hey, the second one's a fraction, but the first one's not. So I just write five over one. See what I did? Okay, do we have any addition subtraction in the denominator? So the rule is I factor. Can you factor x plus 2? Okay, it's already factored. So the second part after you factor is you give me everything. Give me everything in the denominator. So it would be x plus, oh, I know what it is. Give me everything in the denominator. 1 and x, one and x plus 2. Okay, so therefore the, the common denominator is x plus 2. So it would be 5x plus 2. I'll give everybody give it a chance to think. Okay, so the common denominator is x plus 2. That's easy. So I don't need to do anything with this when it's already x plus 2. All right, is Porter my man? Yeah. What am I missing between this and this? Ah, you're getting it now. X plus 2. So that's what I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by X plus 2. Okay, Aiden, do it. Multiply. X. No, I got this. 5X. 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 
Five X plus five. Hey Jared, wait, dude, what do I multiply? <laughs> well, not, I'm not like you. Like, <laughs> I'm not Let him do it. Let him do it. What do I multiply? Five. You gotta know this part. <laughs> I know, I forgot. Distributed by what? What's that? <laughs> I know we did that. Oh my god. Five times X is. It's five. Oh my god. X. Let him make. You're good though. Five X. How many arrows do I need? How many things on the inside? You need X or one. There's only two. one thing on the inside. There's two things. So I need two arrows. You already did the first arrow. Ten. And then five X plus arrow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There you go. Okay. Now, for everyone else that, that thought that this was easy, well, this is that weird one. What's that symbol right there? Two. Okay. So I want to make sure everybody gets this. When you have a minus sign, what this minus does is it takes everything in this fraction and flips the sign. So it's negative x. So that becomes negative x. And that becomes. Okay. So now I'm going to write everything. I got a five x. I got a plus ten. I get a negative x and a positive 3. I'm going to write all of that together. See what I did? Yep. I did that. Now I'm going to combine like terms. 5x minus x. x. What do you mean? I thought you said 5. 5x Five. Five minus x. 4x. 4x. 10 plus 3. Uh, See what I did? Hey, 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 hey. Okay. Who's lost? Okay, what part, Julie? Are we okay to hear? Are we okay to find the common denominator? So here's the, here's the start. I wrote that right there. Now I'm looking at the denominators. I got a one and an x plus two. When you have addition or subtraction, I want everything. I want the one and I want the x plus two multiplied together. The drill is one times anything is itself. So all you really have here is x plus 2. By the way, today, or tonight's homework, this is how it's going to work. They're going to give you either a whole number or a constant or a variable. It's always going to be over 1. So you're always going to be multiplying 1 times this. In other words, we can forget about the 1. It's just this. This is the common denominator. Just for today. Yesterday, different story. Okay? So the, this one is already over x plus 2. I just got to turn that into an x plus 2. So you multiply the top and the bottom by x plus 2. Uh, eventually, Aiden told us the answer was 5x plus 10. Okay? This minus sign changes the signs of everything here. It's no longer a plus x, it's a minus x. It's no longer a minus 3, it's a plus 3. So it's 5x plus 10 minus x plus 3. That's what I wrote right there. And then all I did was group things together. 10 and a 3 turns into a 13. And the 5x and the minus x is a 4x. Okay? Let's do one. Box two. Let's do it together. Here we go. Hey, I need everything as a fraction, so that turns into... 8 over 1 plus 1x. One, no. well, 1 over x. No. Okay? What's the common denominator? X, x. It's just x. So this one is already over x. The only one i got to change is the first one. How do we turn a 1 into an x? Um, Both top and bottom by the thing we're missing. We're missing an x. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by x. 8 times x. Now you can say 8x, right? So that turns into 8x plus 1 all over x. How much more complicated? It, it, well, this one's an easy one, right? What, that, like, it oh, the last one I showed you before this is as complicated as it gets oh, for homework. Great. Oh. Right. So I get 8x plus 1 over x. Uh, most of you, look up here, say, I didn't make the problem any easier. I made it more complicated. Look what you started with, 8 plus 1 over x. Look what you finished with. It looks more messy than what we started with. That's the case of when you have uh, two rational numbers that are have a variable expression for each. Sometimes it gets messier. You know, usually when we add two fractions, it, it, we get one fraction as an answer. Well, we got one fraction as an answer, but we got a mess that can happen. All right, easy as it gets, more challenging. All right, more challenging. You should be doing the math. Okay, we turn this into a fraction by, put it over one. What's the common denominator? 
A. Stop me if I'm going too fast. Common denominator is A. Well, the second fraction already is over A. It's done. We just got to worry about the first fraction. How do you turn a 1 into an A? Top and bottom times A. 3A times A? 3AA or 3A squared? So 3A squared. Notice now I have common denominators. 3A squared minus 2 is 3A squared minus 2. Yeah, there's, there's nothing that we, we are. We're changing this 2 to a negative 2. We're flipping it. Okay? The only issue is, can it be factable? And it turns out there's nothing that goes into this other than what's there. A 1 can go into both of these terms. When this is factorable, it'll be something squared minus, and this will be a perfect square, like a 9, minus 9, or minus 16, or minus 25. Minus 2 is not factorable. All over, it's cutting it off, all over 8. Yes? Why is the homework 271, 272 when 20 ends on 270? Uh, because I, when, uh, I've been teaching uh, Algebra 1 as an honors class for the last three years. This is the first, first time in three years that I've taught to average students. Okay. And so when, when I changed over from honors to this, what I did was I cut the homework down to the more oh. average ones, and I didn't change the page numbers. Oh, okay. So. So if you look at what the honors algebra kids would have, they would include that page. Typically what happens is the A exercises are for average, the B is, C is for the honors kids. All right, here we go, box four. Uh, we turn this five into five over one. What's the common denominator? X plus two. Okay, so the second one is already in, I mean, they're all kind of like this uh, for homework. So the second one already is x plus 2. We don't need to mess with it. We've got to mess with the second one. If you're going to make a mistake a lot of times is when you copy the problem down, somehow minus is turns into plus. So be careful. Make sure you bring every down, everything down correctly. So I'm missing an x plus 2, so I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by an x plus 2. Stop me if I'm going too fast. Uh, Aiden? 5x. Perfect. All right. So we get 5x plus 10. This minus sign does what to this 4? So therefore, the 4 is? So I get 5x plus 10 minus 4. Most of you guys, instead of rewriting this, will do what? Go straight to the answer. I'm going to rewrite it as 5x plus 10 minus 4, but you certainly can go straight to the answer. What is 10 minus 4? I don't know. There's your answer. Once again, you still have to ask yourself, can it be factored? Well, there's nothing you can factor x plus 2 into. And there's nothing, you can't for this one. There's nothing that goes into 5 and 6. If this had been an 8x plus 6, we'd factor out a 2. Yeah, but the 2 is not, it's not attached by multiplication. Yeah. Oh. 10 minus 4 is 6. Ask me another one. That was good. Uh, sometimes you just got to get used to how the teacher writes the work, right? To me, this makes perfect sense, like the order I wrote it. Some people, I look at homework, they'll go straight left to right. Just, they'll see this all the way across the page. The issue with that is your eyeball, it's a little bit harder to follow. Math, we like things vertically. It's just easier to see step one, step two, step three, step four. When you write it with it just equals, 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 even you can't follow the work. Questions? Hey, we're already on box five. Uh, this is about as complicated as it gets right here. All right. It's not much more complicated than this one. Aiden, have you written down any of this? Actually, yes. Okay. We're on box five. Here we go. We turn this four into a fraction by... Put it over one. What's the common denominator? That's one. So this is the one that's going to be as ugly as it gets. Okay. So we got to multiply top and bottom by. Rome. Move.
All right. Uh, distributed property, what do we get? Okay, and now comes the only thing you got to be careful at. Julie, this negative does what to these two things? It, it flips them around. I don't want to say it turns everything negative. It does in this case. But what I want to say is it flips every sign. So the 2N now becomes, and the 1 becomes, okay? From here, we go right to our answer. Let's see. 4N minus 2N is? 2N. And 4 minus 1 is? 3. There's your answer. 1250. Uh, no, no, it's a, it's a 12, isn't it? Yeah, the, the bell that. rings at five till for the first period to end. Two. No. We get two Yeah, two. Twelve fifteen is normal lunch. I want to say it's eleven fifty five is where their lunch ends, and twelve o'clock is when I have to get. Twelve or twelve or fifteen. Twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock. Right. Oh, we got ten minutes. Okay. You're thinking about. Here we go. Uh, this one actually is a little bit easier. It just has a variable. No big deal. Put it over one. We're on box six, everybody. Box six. Common denominator is? Okay, we're going to get a quadratic here. Don't panic. We're going to get a quadratic. Okay. So, what's the common denominator? So, we got to multiply top and bottom by n plus one. So this is the one that we're going to get quadratic out of. 8n times n is? 8n squared. 8n squared. 8n times 1 plus 8n. 8n. Okay, you see what I get? Okay, this one looks a little messy. Yes. Hey, I can't hear a word she's saying. One more time. Because uh, this is really 8n times n plus 1. So we're using the distributive property, two arrows. 8n times n is 8n squared. 8n times positive 1 is plus 8n. Okay. 2 turns into? Negative 2. Negative 2. And then n minus 1. There's no n minus 1 yet. Oh. We get that right there. Possibly this could be factorable. Right? The only way we know if it's factorable is if we do the old a times c. A times c is negative 16. I gotta add if it's factorable, I'll get something that adds up to an 8. Well, 1 and 16, that doesn't work. Uh 2 and 8, that doesn't get me to an 8. And a 4 and a 4 could get me to an 8, but I gotta add up to a negative 16. The only way you get to a negative 16 is if they're both, one's negative and one's positive. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0, not positive 8. So there's no way to get to negative 16. So this one's not factorable. It, it looks like it might be because it's quadratic. This one ends up not being factorable. What's up? How do I what now? All I'm doing is saying minus 2. I already got common denominator, so I'm just saying 8n squared plus 8n minus 2. Julie. That's not us. No. 11? Yeah. Variable? Yeah. yeah, that was yesterday. Luckily for us, it's not today. All right, uh, this is the hardest one, the one we'll stop with. All right, so let's do this one, call it a day. Uh, this one will be factorable. All right, here we go. Same process now, what are we going to do? Over one. Put it over one, Ryan. Put it over one. What's the common denominator? Two A plus five. No. Two A plus five. Okay, so I'm going to give myself a little bit of space, okay. and we need to multiply top and bottom by 2a plus 5. 4a third plus 2a plus 5. 
Praise word. So when you do this distributive property, you get something we haven't seen before. We get a cubic. Cubic. You get something to the third power. So we get two a cubed. I'm sorry, four a cubed plus ten a squared. All I'm doing is distributive property. Two a squared times two a. Four a. Two is four a squared times a is a to the third power. Two a squared times five is ten a squared. Hey. You're staying here with me for lunch. Well, I give her a time for five. Please stop interrupting class. Wait, are we getting upstairs? Are we getting at lunch? No, I forgot. <laughs> All right. This is a big hot mess here. What does this minus thing do? So this A becomes negative. And the negative one becomes. So I'm going to write everything 4A cubed plus 10A squared minus A. Plus one. plus one, all over two a to the fifth. I lied. It's, there's one more. It's the next one. That's the no. There's only. Uh, no, it's the last one. Sorry, it's not this one. I, I forgot there was this one. No, there's only eight. I thought there was one more. No, there is. You have the wrong number on the slide. It's one seven. Oh, got it. Okay. All right. Let's look at the one that is faculty. Here we go. Notice we got three things here, nothing changes. Aiden, I have no idea what you're doing, but it's not what you're supposed to be doing. Where's your paper? Where's your because we're done. No, we're not. We ain't done. All right. Here we go. So clearly I labeled the numbers incorrect. Okay. This is done exactly the same way. You just put the one that isn't over over one. What's the common denominator here? X is one. I want everything, so I had x plus one x to the highest power, where the highest power is to the first power. It's just x plus one. So I don't do anything to this one, I don't do anything to this one, I do have to do something to this one. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. This is already x plus one, this is already x plus one, this one is not. So, so yeah. the only one I gotta change is that first one. Multiply by x plus one. So x what do we get? Plus x. We get x squared plus x. I'm gonna slow down here a second. I'm so sorry. So I get x squared plus x over and all x the rest. One. And then that turns I got a minus, so that turns into negative. I got a minus, so that turns into positive. negative. Negative six. Oh yeah, negative. Positive. Plus two. Okay. So when I write this whole thing, it's x squared plus x minus eight minus six x plus two. That's a lot. And we're not done yet. Let's see what we can group together. We can group the minus eight and the plus two. That gives me. Negative six and a plus x and a minus six x. Negative five x. Okay. This one is factorable. Negative six that adds up to negative five. A one and a six that can get me to a five if the six is negative and the one is positive. You see that? Negative six times positive one is negative six. Negative six plus one, negative five. So the top one factors into x plus 1, x minus 6. x plus 1, x minus 6. I wrote it backwards, but you get the idea. Yes. Guess what you can do now? Cancel out the x plus 1. So, so guess what the final answer is? x plus 6. X plus six. X minus six. Minus six. This is the only one that is satisfying in the sense of we added three fractions together. And we got a nice, small, tiny, little friendly number. Notice that we started with that. And the final answer is satisfying in the sense that we got something that you would think we would get when we're adding subtracting fractions, something smaller. And it turns into numbers. Yeah. 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 I have your test. For you? You don't have to scan it anything, just bring me the hard copy on Monday. Okay. If we're in quarantine, then you will scan it or take a picture of it. 
A whole book of truth, yes. And a calculator, don't care. Not gonna help you, but. Who do we think that she caught it from? Who knows? Outside? Aiden said there is one Harley as a hair test. Supposedly, um, Harley's grandma has a few different, um, let's go. Mm -hmm. And Aiden said there is one Harley as a hair test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're you're accepting Aiden as your source of of no, truth. No, I'm not. That's fair. Aiden is the What are we saying? I have no idea. Joy's like, Joy's like, comfort. I'm very angry to like all these boys. He's pretty smart compared to all the other boys in class. Aiden is smart compared to the other boys? No, that's not how it's supposed to come out. I'm just like, <laughs> are we talking about math or are we talking about other subjects? Uh, we're talking about none of the subjects. None of the subjects, okay. What about Porter? <laughs> They're all loud. Porter? Porter? Porter, I've never heard Nathan say anything during class. Oh. What about Porter? Porter doesn't talk. No. Chris doesn't talk much, does he? Uh, it's chips and stuff noodles. Chips instead of noodles? Yeah, chips instead of noodles, but I just got chips because I don't like doing it. It's disgusting. Oh, see my Wait, look, look at that. And mm. I, just, I wanted this deal. It's sitting there. Hey, all you boys just got thrown under the bus by the girls. Why? Well, I, I don't know. Look at me. Look at you. 